Hang on. Here we go. Okay. Now, now start. All in order. Roll call. Eddie Zell, here. Beth McCarlin, here. Eric Fisher, here. Tiffany Hughes, here. Lisa McCrad, here. Brady Oxender, here. Um, let's get into it. Shelter update. Um, Eric, you had some, some more conversations? We had some conversations. We had a quote. I think we, well, we met Morton builders yes. out there. The original quote that we gave, I'll give the update. The original quote that we gave um, for the structure um, that had the back wall, um, we ended up scheduling a meeting with him. He came out, looked at the site, because obviously it's easier to look at the site. Um, and he is working on it. So as soon as we get an updated version, since we, depending on our next meeting, I may just forward that out to everyone so you guys can have some time to look at it. Um, I'm hoping that we have it this week, but we don't have it yet. So, but we did meet with them last Wednesday, I believe. Okay. So, does the village have any kind of requirements on numbers of bids or anything like that that have to go? If it's under fifty, us, right? if it's under fifty thousand dollars, we do. We would like to have. I don't know that there's a requirement, and that's something I could double check. But we would like to get other quotes. Um, as you can see, we've we've gotten actually there is another one that we haven't gone too far in depth with. It's just pretty much like a sentence on how much it's going to cost. But we could easily bring them out. Um, over fifty thousand, it has to go out to bid. So right now, we're just waiting to see. You know, with drainage and with um, once we saw the site, you know, is that going to affect the price? Ten thousand, five thousand, twenty five thousand. If it goes over fifty, it's going to have to be. Okay. As of yesterday, or you know, as of last week, it was pretty far off from fifty. So we'll see. But he was also reaching out to um, some of the concrete people and some of the other people, excavators, because again, he was originally not thinking he would need to do this, 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 and this. Some and site work. Yeah, that some site work. Okay. So yeah, it may go over 50, and at that point, yes, it would have to be bid out. Okay, so once we get that firm estimate, firm mm -hmm. estimate, uh, you'll send some oxymoron, right? Uh, you'll send that out to us, and we'll all take a look. Yes. Um, and then, I mean, my, my hope is that we get something here that we're all happy with and we can get this submitted mm -hmm. um, up to, you know, we can get this recommended up to council in, in I guess it technically right. is early fall, but still say early fall. And this was a builder that has done multiple projects like this, so that was one of the comfort levels that we had dealing with. Um, it was a great option to call him. So um, we had reached out to, I believe she said nine or ten, and only two responded back. So um, I'll get you guys the info from the other one. And, and again, once we see this price, we'll see. Um, if it is under 50, it would still be nice to at least get another person or two out there just cool. for an idea. Great. So is that, he's looking at like a turnkey type of private thing? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, instead of like having a concrete, you know, because I've already instead gotten. Instead of us doing like concrete. Correct. And like, like all that stuff. Correct. He would do all of the above. Awesome. That's great. Cool. That's the plan. That is the plan. That's that was kind of. I did the a la carte, which was definitely going to be well over sixty. Um, and then we'll see where this one comes in at. Um, cool. Anything else on the shelter? Awesome. Uh, let's <clears throat> jump to the commercial signage code. All right. Uh, on the back of the agenda is a, a repeat of our code that's applicable in this case, um, in the next couple of pages, I should say, of the attached agenda. Uh, there's a highlighted section which appears in gray on your, your printed copies. Um, and basically, it's, again, getting back to what we had discussed a couple meetings back, I believe, was how we're, I think the point of discussion was the surface area of the window, how it's de decided, 10% is pretty small. Right, so I think that's what we had come to the conclusion of. I uh, printed a couple different codes this evening, one Westerville, one City of New Albany, so that you can kind of get a little little flavor for um, how their codes read, which is always useful to kind of compare and contrast. Uh, and I just recommend you kind of look at that on your, your own time, because especially New Albany, it starts to get thick and they start to throw a lot of stuff into it. Signs, as we have talked about in the past, are rather can get rather uh, complicated quickly. Uh, depending on how the community views these things. But in short, what we're focusking on is um, just starting with the display areas. 
and how it's designed. Um, for the Westerville code, which is the one that is 1181.07, that one, I'll jump to it here, is under N, so page two of three. And that talks about, in, in Westerville's case, temporary signs are limited to 25%. So you can kind of see how they design. Go ahead and read that quick paragraph there, and so you'll see how it's designed. Legislative meeting on the 14th of this week, right before the council meeting. Okay. Just as an FYI, he just sent a message. Okay. 6.30. 6.30, And I just sent it to Barb to put on the calendar. If you don't that one, then the other one, which is the 1169, is the village or the city now of New Albany, uh, and their their commercial signage. Sorry, it's a little, it's a little thicker. Let me just refine where it was. Uh, yes. Hold on. No, I'm looking for windows. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. One second. Temporary window signs. Yes, yes, sorry, thank you. There's just 15% right there at the top. Um, and they state, they, they define it more as temporary from the standard code standpoint, right? So from a, just a standard permitted use, 15%. I will simply point out that any time that these communities are doing some developments, like let's say they're doing a large anchor-based retail center, which has a giant eagle as an example, okay? And in, in Columbus is doing the same thing. I didn't bring Columbus because it's super voluminous, you know, but it's, it's, it's kind of similar. Um, but any time that they're doing these, they do them in plan districts now, and they, the anchor tenant is very important, i.e. the grocery store, so they typically write it so that they can kind of do what they want. They don't follow the standard code. So although the standard is here for the city retail center, when you deal with larger anchor tenants, uh, they kind of they say what they get, right, within the text itself. So if they want to leave it up, 24 hours, seven days a week, all year, take up the whole window, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, if, they, they're, if they're gonna split it up in some way, that's, what it, that's the way it's gonna be. But this is, this is important just to note in behind your, you know, kind of the back of your mind. We don't have anything like that going on. So I would say since our largest tenant is obviously the grocery store over here, um, you know, I would say kind of in the GFS is another one, although they don't have the giant, giant windows, but you know. You know um, I would say just, just, you know, bear that in mind when you think about the overall percentage, you know. And the way Westerville writes there is it's more designed on aggregate window space, and that's kind of what we I know we were talking about a little bit in this body. Yeah, kind of like Westerville one, twenty five percent. We both one sign per window. Mm -hmm. We have 120 days versus 45 days. Yep. Yeah, Westerville clearly gives them, they're, they're calling them temporary signs that kind of last. Yeah. Because you got to pull down. And I would say, look, if it really, I mean, it's up to the community. I don't think there's, there's not a right or wrong to this. Some people just don't want to see the same thing in the window. But again, if it's, if it's something that works for the business, I don't see why you limit it on time frame. Right. I don't like the idea of a time frame, and um, I'm going to say my two cents on time frame, and maybe things will change later on down the road. I don't have time for it. Code enforcement doesn't have time for it. I mean, what are we going to do? Start marking on a thing and say, this was done on June 16th. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, okay, was it, wasn't it? What if they, okay, then let's say they remove it for how long, and then they go put it right back. Right. So they've taken it out for 24. So unless you're going to, I mean, are we really going to enforce that? If we're... And this is where I'm just going to say, if we're not going to enforce it, quit putting the stuff in here. Right. And I'm just going to say, the current way that we stand, 
with a part-time code enforcement officer, there, we don't have time for that. Plus, if they paid money to make a professional yeah. sign, we want them to keep that instead yeah. of taking it down. Correct. And right Correct. You're, so you're forcing a burden upon the business. If it's a nice looking sign, mm -hmm. it's professionally done, which we were, we would require, and it works for the business, what do we honestly care at the end of the day? If it starts to get tattered, if it shows something, then we, we have maintenance code to deal with that and say you got to take it down, right? Yeah. And that's really where the enforcement comes in. It starts looking crappy and, you know, working against the nice look, right. and that's what you go after. Yeah. So, uh, so, I mean, I, I think what, where we're coming down is the percentage that can be taken up and the number of individual signs that can make up that percentage. Yep. And, and, and how you define the window area. That's addressing the concerns that we've gathered, right? I think the only thing that I've always said is I don't like, and, and we don't have a lot of this, but I think we don't have a lot that's taken in. I just don't like the like beer sign $8.99, beer sign $7.99, beer sign $4.99, you know, just all these random like looking posters. You could reward it with a with a larger percentage with a one consistent sign. So I think that's kind of I think that's the only thing that I don't like is when I think about driving in certain and, and again I'm not, I don't want to sound horrible but when you pass through some of these like carryouts and you pass through some of these other things I don't think we need to be and I hate to say Bexley or New Albany or whatever where they have to be like you know real estate agents have to have a certain exact sign in order to even put it out in New Albany I mean they're just particular. I don't want to be that, but I also don't want to be the one that, again, you have like 14 different random posters sitting in the window. So I think there's like the happy medium. I don't, you know. So, so if we took New Albany's B and changed, so first floor storefront, that's the same as we have. Get rid of the words will be considered temporary. Get rid of everything in reference is temporary. Window signs are limited to a maximum of one per window, up to three windows, not to exceed some percent of the area of the windows which they are placed. And then ditch the last two sentences. So another question, do we care if they put a full window graphic up or not? I mean, does it have so, to be and, and, I, and I think that's what's funny because when you start thinking about certain things, and, and again, I'm just going to use my own, um, we, as my other world, travel agent, we get these signs, we get those like things that you can put on the glass, and they're like hundreds of dollars, and they say like sandals at the bottom, and you go to any travel agency that actually has a storefront anymore, and those are in the window. What's wrong with that? They're nice. They're pretty. They're not, you know, I mean, it's, who doesn't want to look at a blue, like, what's wrong with that? So I think that you, well, there's, I mean, there's the balance I mean, of both worlds. And, and you look at Yasmin, like. I don't have an issue with anything that they have. Because they just basically put bookcases up in front of the windows. Yeah, taking advantage there's of nothing windows. in the windows at all. Right. It just looks, you know, whited out, basically. Yeah. Right. It's, um. I, I mean, I tend to agree. I, I feel like if we just said window signs are limited to a maximum of one per window. Yeah, you can use up to. And, and granted, other places in our code say that posting hours, posting yeah, um, master, cards, master cards, and like that informational. Is, right, yeah. is, is, all, is all fine. And so, yeah, if somebody wants to have one entire window taken up with their entire beer menu that's professionally printed. Right. Then yeah, I mean, I think the only thing I'm trying to avoid is like those plastered up, like just multi, generic, like eight and a half by eleven. Yeah, yeah that's no that's all I care. Like again, I've seen those large ones that just they look really yeah, nice. I think the, the reason that you put a percentage in is to keep people from newspapering over all the windows and conducting shady business. Yes, in which we've seen. Not Yasmin. I'm not talking about right. them because again, that's and just so, normal. You know, what what we're opening the door for here. In, in some theoretical world, is someone paying to print huge mm -hmm. newspaper, right. one single piece to put in their window so that they can then conduct shady things, which right. currently is not allowed because we're only 10% well, of our windows. You put up a curtain and they can do that too. They, could. they can yeah. block the window. With you can block the window. 
Yeah, that's why I don't think I don't think we're yeah, that's a concern. I think it's doing it professionally and not doing it crappily, right? So can we put that in the code? Yes. Not man. crappily. Yeah. Um, so I mean is there language for well, I mean I guess there, there is. You can put in a professional professionally done sign, which means I can't just print it on my, you know, and make a cardboard right and stick that in the window, right? As an example. That's that's what we don't want done. It's right. doing a homemade sign. There's clear legal definitions for homemade yeah. versus professional. Okay. And so one sign. So you're saying on the one that on ours then get rid of the for erected for a period not to exceed thirty days, so you're deleting that. We're getting well, I, I mean, if they were talking about adopting the changing it around, adopting some of the language. So I, as a whole, would go away, and we would would be replaced with something that we're discussing now. Yeah, one second. I would I would maintain that I um, for for H. I think that could could use some revision too, but. So do we care about ground level or not? It's in, I mean, it's in both of the other ones. So I would think whatever. Yeah, we would keep the ground level. Storefront windows is defined, you know, in, in New Albany code as an example. So we would say, we could call it that, ground level slash storefront. Yeah, signs placed in the first floor and storefront yep. windows has to be visible from the right away. Okay. Can make that clear. Window signs are limited to a maximum of one per window. And that's the end of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Up to three windows, is that even... Applicable to no, us. because it, like like Yasmin's got I think eight nine windows in a row. Right. I think I think we, we don't if we're saying we don't we're not going to worry about that then we're not worried about it. They're, what they're doing there with that definition is making it more of an aggregate like we talked about before. That's that's an option and that's their community's option for how they aggregate those windows. But if honestly it's not that big of a deal, which sounds like it's not, then we don't put it in there. Yeah, I mean, so we got rid of the time requirement that's in our code. Ground level yeah. still exists there. We got rid of the size requirement. Uh, so the one thing left is illuminated only from a concealed source. Yeah. Which. Well, okay, what does that mean? Why well, not that, means, that means you can't have, oh, let's think about that. Mm -hmm. So the lighting can be from the rear. So the store, right, itself will illuminate the rear, which is typical. Okay. You just don't have, you just don't have like clear, like neon signs. It's a sign yeah. illuminating itself, right? That's what they're kind of talking about. What about the about. open signs? Open signs are okay. They're already dealt with in the code. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is, so that's the only thing that I know a couple people have. Oh uh, well. Yeah. I mean, I'll make a. Uh, I'll, what we'll do is we'll make a distinction in a, you know what we call what we define as window signs um, from an application standpoint, meaning how I apply them. There's def, there's definition to how you apply those signs onto the window. They are a non-illuminated sign by nature. So what we we wouldn't want to do is you know, applying some sign that had a self-lighting source. Right, which okay. you can do now with very thin LEDs. Okay, you can oh, make yeah. you, you can, can make just them. Do a box. Yeah, sign and, and then you put it inside it. But we, that's not what we're saying. We're saying this is more of an application on the window itself. Right. So I either it's a you know the simplest form is a homemade piece of paper I stick on the window as we have discussed. The professional ones are done where they're you know they're rolled on and put on professional, yeah. but they're not lit. So we'll make that clear. Well, and yeah, so here's window signage with a total area of less than two square feet and bearing only information about entry yeah. and exit, business hours, and okay. or discount. So I would say business hours, if, you're, if your sign is not any bigger than two square feet, yeah. that's, then, that's and it's allowed to be illuminated according to the community. That would, be, that would be an exception to the, like what we're talking about here is totally different. That's an exception to the standard rule. I mean, you put that in the window. You could, you could even have, I would say, you could have an application of some window and then maybe in the on the side by the door you would have this right illuminated power sign or something right. like that right which is just little yeah it's not but even like the neon open sign correct right would be as long as it's less than two square correct. feet it's okay that it would be okay here correct and it doesn't count toward no your your one one per window correct um what are we missing does what everybody was the, feel what comfortable was the percentage? With this? Was it 15? No, we're getting rid of the percent. Getting rid of the yeah. yeah, it can, oh, be, it can so be up to 100. You can fill the entire window. Yep. Yeah. But with only, it's got to be a single printed, a single professionally made sign. Sign. Getting rid of the time frame. Yeah. Um, can anybody think of any of the businesses down there that that would not work? Like something like, I mean, I'm, again, I'm just saying it out loud because of. Right, Jerusalem pops into mind, but that's not us. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, 
because they have you know mm -hmm. daily specials and weekly specials and six months ago special and, and okay. you know um, all kinds of specials. Yeah, but that place is special. But not in your report. Um, it's all good. No, I mean I, I'm granted I don't drive south on. I do all the time. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. So I'm pretty much just thinking about Yasmin and GFS and GFS has. Yeah. No, no. No signage whatsoever. No. The only thing I can think of is that there used to be a car dealer on the other side of Old Dublin Grandview, like by the Waffle House. That's in Minerva Park. It's vacant have. right now. Yeah, it's vacant. Yes. I don't think they have them. Well, well, and I mean, a car dealer can slap prices on every windshield and it's not covered at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're just talking about their storefront, so. Yeah. And they've got a bunch of windows, but even at that, I think, yeah, I mean, well, but here's, here's what I would say on that. I mean, Car dealers, whether they have the big, you know, sale sign or whatever, I mean, those are typically professionally done signs. So, I mean, even at that, I think that's the biggest thing that I have. I think yeah, they're going to have a lot, and we have a whole different section about sandwich boards and all that stuff. So, yeah. would would signs that are not professionally made be grandfathered in? Uh, I. I don't know. We have, do we have any that exist? Yeah, um, there's like that super like a store in the strip mall. There's like a. No, it's a temporary sign, so it does not get grandfathered in. Okay. It's not a permanent piece of the structure or in any form of legal non Okay, because they have like okay. a big poster with handwritten signs. No, yeah, we can tell them that that's not the code. If it's temporary like that, they can tell them it's not allowed anymore. So, no legal non-conforming in that case. Good question. But we're taking away the fact that it has to be temporary, aren't we? We are. It's not. It's, it, these are... Window display these, signs. These are, so, yeah, these are temporary, but we don't call them temporary because we're not giving a temporary time frame. They could be a permanent piece attachment to the window because they may be in great shape for two years, and the owner may choose not to change it. I mean, temporary can be defined to be multiple. People generally think of temporary within certain short-term yeah. thoughts, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about window display signs. It's so not permanent, anything that's mounted you know, to the brick or whatever, that's not going to apply, but anything that's stuck in your window, yeah, it's going to have to be. Yeah. Um, while we're while we're digging into this, though, can I say my piece again about yeah. Hinge? That uh, so promotion of school, community service, or church activities for a maximum period of fifteen days per activity, and no one sponsor shall display a promotional sign for more than thirty days in any one year. So that means to post the Westerville South football schedule. In, in a window. I don't know that that's something we can enforce. Oh, well, I guess it would depend on what size it is, right? Is it I mean, my, my suggestion would be to just get rid of the time frames in it again. Agree. But, but here's, here's what I'm going to say about that. So some of this is written in copy from other code, right? So I'm not sure, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I should say, if, if I take, as a business owner, place a Westerville pennant, a Westerville football schedule, an OSU schedule. I don't think we can, I think this is a free, that goes beyond, this is, that's a free speech issue, right? And it is a, you're not, it's not a piece of commercial language that we can, that we can enforce, so right? That we can restrict. Why not just remove it if we can? I agree with that statement entirely. I, 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 yeah, there's no purpose in having it in there. It was copied from some other code similar to the time frame that they said you can only have political signs up every 30 days, right? At most, and right, you can't do that. Well, then, yeah. So, I mean, if, if we're gonna, if we're going to fix I, then let's fix H. Agreed. Just yank it. Yeah, there's um, no reason for that. Cool. I agree. And that's and that's how we came from having Stupid. code that says you cannot feed <laughs> the ducks under any circumstance, and then also creates a designated duck feeding area. <laughs> Which both exist in our code. <laughs> I, right. And, I, not, and just so you know, there's actual signage down there for it too. It right. exists in code and there's the sign, do not feed ducks. And then right. you can and then we have no feeding ducks this, behind. But we also have designated areas to do it. Correct. No feeding ducks behind, beside this point. Right. Yeah. So. So question, with the village, with the new building, would we ever put any signs or anything in the no. window with this people? No. We're not commercial. We're, we're, yeah, we also don't have to we're follow our own zoning. Yeah. Okay. We don't follow our own rules. Yeah, we What's don't wrong with you? Well, we're not, we're not a business. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're, 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 we're the municipality and don't have to follow our own zoning. That's very true under state law. <laughs> it's very funny, but that's the truth. Okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to say about the commercial signage code? Okay, wait. So here's two of me to write wait, this wait, wait, up wait, and then wait, bring wait. it back for a final recommendation up on the, if, whenever the next meeting is. So yeah, if you would be, so here, I'll, I'll be, I'll be blunt here. My hope is because this is a weird month and schedules get weird. My hope is to have this be our only meeting this month, but I also want to get things done. Sure. So if we are going to send out the shelter update and we all agree to actually take a look, or the, uh, the estimate, we all agree to actually take a look and maybe have some conversation about it. And then if Eric will agree to get what we believe this new section to be, um, then my hope would be first item on the agenda at the next meeting, which would be the very beginning of October, well, yep. to vote on it. And that would be good because then any of these can go to legislation in October as well. It would be a good time. Yes, ma'am. Can we talk about E for 30 seconds? E? Political signs and posters for candidates oh, no yeah, more can, than 30 days prior. We can remove that prior. too. Yeah, we can remove that too. That's, that's another one. It's like eight. It should just be nixed off of there. Yeah. Yeah, so E so should also go. She's this, right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, if we're doing it, let's just do it. Yeah. And then what about D? What, what, one thing, while we're talking about E, I, I do have a couple suggestions. Um, D talks about holiday, religious holidays, sign clearly nature, no more than 30 days in uh, one year. Yeah, we, we should adjust that too. Thanks. I mean, if we're going to do it, let's just do it. Yeah. With, with E, we actually, this is a good point of discussion. If we're going to adjust it, I, I will simply point out, if you remove it entirely, th th there's two ways of handling political speech, okay? You have to be completely even-handed. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could totally say everyone can't put it out there, although that you don't see that happen. Now, I, I just put that as an extreme start in my discussion. You may also because it's a time, place, manner uh, restriction, you may also be very specific in how you evenly apply the rules, i.e., I, I, will, I will make a suggestion and I will put it in for people to review because what we have done, what I have written for other communities is specifically is one political message per sign, per parcel, per frontage, essentially, okay? Which prevents, which prevents you from having 10 of the same sign, Right, allows one message, right, per frontage. So if someone's got a corner, they can have one on the same parcel per frontage. Have enough two parcels, they can have two signs. Right, that's just the nature of the beast. But generally speaking, most of our homeowners have a plat of you know with with one. Right. So one you parcel. could say Jeff for president, Tim for treasurer, yep. and yep. Joe for yep. state rep. It, you just can't say Tim for president, Tim for president, Tim for president. Exactly. Tim for president. It prevents. It prevents a form of sign clutter, which annoys the crap out of, I think, most people, right? And, and, and takes away from the purpose of the message in the first place. Um, some people may disagree, but it's an even-handed application of sign rule. Everyone is treated the same. If it, I mean, if it stands up, I'm not it does. It's the other, The other one is to keep the signs to a specific size, of the standard size. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's that, true. That, is, that limits you from having someone suddenly throwing up an 8x4 and it does happen, right? So maybe which it never secure properly and it blows away in the wind into someone's car. So so maybe a lot of this is yeah. So D, but like C, no. D, I feel like we just need to take out the thirty consecutive, like clearly I think, because yeah. the, you the can't, size you can't restrict, is in there. You can't restrict, and I'll double check that. But I'm pretty sure if I want to celebrate Hanukkah all year round, I'm perfectly allowed to do that. Right. right. So I think <laughs> if we take out, too. but if we're celebrating Hanukkah or whatever. Yeah. And our sign, we can legally political signs and yes. religious signs. We can same message. But we I mean, the size. Yeah, we can, can control the size. Correct. We just can't control how long it sits out there. Correct. 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 Okay. Right. Oh, correct. The, yes. size, the time, place, manner is what we're looking at. Here. Right. So okay. So yeah, I think both just but, need adjusted. Right. But then obviously, if someone has ten signs in December that say Merry Christmas. I wouldn't think we would go and enforce that as 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 Christmas decorations. I, I agree because it's not we're, we're not yeah it, 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 it's part of a display right, right? and we're, we're getting into some funniness with that right the easiest one the political message is easy to describe if I get into religious stuff I get a different ball game right, right. does anybody have objections to doing this single message right well, I'm reading like in kind of like the whole code thing and so. And going through this, it's like, 
purpose intent, signs defined, exempted signs. So this is just saying that these don't require a permit. Correct. Right. Right. And Correct. then and then there's other sections that say about permanent signs that have size and number and Correct. placement and wall right. signs. Different. So those sec if you're taking away this language of temporary no, no. then everything's falling under this permanent and are these then these yes. permanent no, no, requirements no. now the permanent requirements under this temporary the permanent requirements stand for our permitted sign. So we would we, we have to follow so when we have permitted signs Temporary signs where, where we're talking about specifically are dealing with the window application sign and or in these cases where we've got political signs or a form of temporary sign. Let's, let's yeah, stop using that. Let's use exempted signs. Yeah, exempted signs. Sorry. Thank you. Or a form of exempted sign that they can put out there. It's a free speech type issue. It's solely separate of a permitted sign. A permitted sign is more when we have a commercial application of a, of a permit that comes in, in the case of a business uh, or anything like that. Because You'll note that certain certain signs are not allowed in the residential zone. Okay, so anything that I can produce out in the commercial zone with a business, whether it's on a wall or a monument sign, are not are not allowed within the, the and, residential zone. And, and, and actually, you do you, you have the whole you've got the whole, yeah, got the whole thing. So if you go back back into what is it just twelve eighty? Is that the beginning of signage? Twelve eighty is the beginning of signage. So if you read in the first couple sentences there. They say that that it is the council's intent that this section, being all of 1280, apply only to businesses. So even what we're talking about with the political signage right now being exempt, mm -hmm. it means that it's exempt from permitting for businesses. Yeah, I think that. Doesn't the residential they, they, chapter then refer uh, back to? Oh, it does. It does. So it, they didn't write that exactly correct. Well, um, and so we, 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 we can change some of that initial language just to get it cleaned up. It, it is more of an application to the entire village, and that's how it's been. And that's how the intent is read, and that's how we, we apply it from an right. enforcement standpoint, right? So is a flag a sign? No, it's up at the top. It, it's a. It's exempt. The flag yeah. can't sing of any nation, state, city, or other So if I wanted to put like a Tiffany for Mayor flag. Like six of them in the same. No, form. no, we would interpret that as your your message. So so flags can be a form of a political message. We we're getting into some some weeds, yeah. right? But I will tell you that if you put up six flags that that are not that those are not the American like that's not the official American flag, right? So the official so what you've done now is you've taken a symbol and you've written words on it and you've created a message, right? And it is a sign. Yeah. At this point, even though it's a flag, it's a sign. Just like his. His flag across the street. It's yeah. a form of a form of a message. It's a political political speech, but still a message, yeah. right? And if you put six of them up under the new code, I'm going to tell you you're going to have to remove five of the six. So, and I think I've actually seen signs for this last year. But what if I put up Jesus for president or something like that? Jesus president is just fine. So because it's religious. It well, it's it's actually that's free speech. Jesus is a person, and so you're making it. It has a religious connotation, but it falls under political speech in this case. Right? So you still get Religion and politi politics, political speech, free speech is still, they're, they're very intertwined in some ways, but then the courts have separated some of the religious symbols, you know, for people's purposes over the, you know, for display over the course of time. I'm sorry, sir, what were you saying? You, were, you had something. I'm saying you're still limited to one. Yes. For yes, yes, correct. You could put Jesus in one sign and for president in another sign, <laughs> and that's perfectly legitimate to get your two signs in, right? There's two different messages, two signs. They'll be fine under the code. But, you know, you could have four of those. Jesus for a president, something like that. You'd be, you'd be cute. A lot so, of people aren't going to be that cute. So. I, I mean, I, I would say if you're, if you're saying that in other municipalities that, that the single sign holds up. It does. I don't see any reason why, why we would not want to just keep yeah. the, the clutter down. We had a problem in Powell that it, we looked into solutions where suddenly they were thrown up those eight by fours and this giant signs mixed in and we had trouble with that and it was all over the place. One guy, he put a giant, it was, just, it was incredible. He put, he put a huge display like a billboard and lit it and up at night and uh, those kind of fun things. Makes you change the code. Uh, well, so it's a good time to talk about it now it because we're, it, we do have a couple years before, yeah. before you know, yeah. and obviously nobody has any idea what's going to happen then, so now's a good time to, to do it. Correct. But that's good for a point. So we, we, we'll clean up this code. Yeah. And I'll bring something back to you with so, new language. So it would be my hope then 
you know, as, as soon as, I know you've got many things to do, as soon as that can happen, and then hopefully everybody's willing to commit to a, you know, an email dialogue, okay. um, knowing that it will be a public record if, if requested, so yeah. um, don't, don't drop the F-bomb everywhere, guys. Yeah. So you can, um, you can review it, just remember you have to, to act upon it, you've got to do it in the open session. Exactly. For the recommendation. Right, but we don't have a requirement on hearings or anything, because no. all we do is make recommendations. Correct. So my hope would be to get that language exactly how we all agree we want it in time for the first Wednesday October. in October. Okay. And then that will be item agenda item number one. Okay. We'll all, you know, already be okay with it and, and just do Perfect. it. Perfect. All right. And that then will go up to council for their final. Um, and we should be able to do it by the end of the year. Yes, I agree. So that is commercial signage code. Any okay. questions, comments? No. Okay. Let's jump into trailer code and yeah, we're rocking. Trailer code. So, if I may, um, one of the things with one of the things we wrote into here for the recreation large vehicles um, is that. <coughs> They're allowed to bring these, we define it as utility trailer. Okay. All right, so, so, and just as the example, since we have a fine example across the street, and you notice the trailer's already gone today, um, they do get 72 hours to have them in the driveway. Okay. Now, as in, in this example, he's already gone in 72 hours. Right. Temporary. His other vehicles, I think the question is, you know, what was the intent for most parcels within the older section of the village, the new section really can't afford these, but in the older section, we changed this code in 19 to <clears throat> allow for people to take any of the defined any of the defined trailers or RVs or anything around the side and to the back of the house if they can get it in there, right? Now the question is, what we didn't define is how many. That was one item we did not discuss, right? So is it to be a permanent multi, if you can get two or three in, is that fine? Or is that... Not fine. I think is what the question is. To my knowledge, we, we only have one one place in honesty where they can do it. That's across the street. So you can see the example where you've got a boat and then an RV or a camper right back to back. You know, but right now, according to my view of the code, he's ten feet back. Mm -hmm. He's met it. He can put it to the side of the rear of the house. And in fairness, we've had numerous. And this, the reason that we're currently talking about this is there have been. Pool discussion. I mean, I, I have had people coming up to me asking why he's getting special treatment because it is absolutely horrific. Like there were at one point, there were two boats over there and two trailers. One was parked in the street, but he's not breaking any of our actual rules. Is what we're trying to point out. And every, because he's, everything, everything functions. Nothing. He's not correct. storing junk vehicles. Correct. But he's parking them because he has so many. He can't even fit them in there. But they're staying for less than seventy-two hours. So he's parking them in the street. The street's a different issue. But less than twenty-four. That, seventy-two. That, that's, yeah, that's a. So what is he just moving them from driveway to street to driveway? To in street? some cases, when yes. he's maneuvering, and they're big vehicles, and they're causing us some concerns. And the street is separate from the correct. from the zoning review in this case. The street right. is yes. police code. The zoning is here. The, the, the village council, should it choose, can, as the mayor and I talked about today, can we can explore options to change the code that would not allow people to park big vehicles in the streets because our streets are thin as it is, mm -hmm. right? So but then you have trailers of people that are actually trying to work. Well, those are and, and those are more t those can be exempted in the code from a temporary okay. standpoint. We, we we can find ways to do it, but permanent parking more than so many hours can be. We can find a way right. to find that I think. Um, but the problem, the, I guess, the the question of intent is for this body to, to kind of think about is, was it only intended to be one? Or is multiples that you right. can fit into the yard okay? Because you do get into a different situation as you add vehicles right. or trailers into a yard. You get into a clutter situation again, Correct. that's the intent. But to play devil's advocate, why can't I have two because I live on an acre? So you mean to tell me if, and I'm not saying we need to change the code, but this is brought to you guys because we're getting complaints. Um, I'm getting complaints with people in person. We're getting emails, and multiple people have complained about that across so the street. These are these are everything is in his side yard. It is. You can look at it now and it's see how he's got it positioned. He's, he's got it. He's got that gravel back. driveway in his example that goes back, right? And he did. He's got a boat, and then back to back to the boat, he has you know his uh, his camper. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 
He did for a few days, have it up a little closer to the house, and he had them side by side, which I, I think that was not the intent at all. The, you, know, you don't want to see vehicle, vehicle, vehicle. Right, right. So he, he's gotten them right now in line with, with our code, which is fine, mm -hmm. right, as it stands. Um, but I think in the discussion, it's just there's a lot of parking that goes on, right? And so he, so far, he's, he's applied it. And like I said, the street stuff is a separate issue yes. that we'll address. Right. Um, but in this case, I think the question to this body is, you know, it needs to be, just so we understand it, is, it, is the body okay with, commission okay with what's going on here Correct. as it's being, he's utilizing it, or do you think there's a limitation on the number of these type of... Right? Yeah, yeah, go have a look. But again, keeping in mind, some of us live on an acre, and if we limit well, it to one, right. that's, that's I don't have anything, I'm like, just saying. You, you could put a parking lot behind your house, mm -hmm. and you could park a dozen cars. Correct. And unless you're... It's not going to affect one neighbor. Unless you're parking at the church, you're not, no one's even going to know. No. Yeah. And, no, and so, so that's where, you know, equal application mm -hmm. is where I'm struggling. And that's yes. where... So I'm not saying what he's doing is wrong. I'm saying... Is there a need to change it? Is there a want to change it? Yep, right across. And it's actually not that bad earlier. There was another trailer sitting in his driveway, a large, a decently large yeah, trailer. It's a trailer that we'll call it. But it's moved. Um, and there's also a boat that was that he does park in there in front of. But again, it's typically only there 24 yeah. hours, 36 hours. And I, I mean, we're all friends here. I imagine that there are personality issues that are not helping the situation. And I'm you know, I've never much. had an he's issue. A fairly, he's a fairly well-responsive guy. I don't, I, aside from his Confederate flag, I don't have any issues with the man. You know, no. I mean, right, and yeah. I imagine he's, that there are folks who would prefer to complain as opposed to have a There are people that do not... Um, that don't know him, but don't know Correct. Him. Very much so. Yeah, I would the, agree with the, that. The, the typical, the, the repetitive complaining from some... Is, is repetitive complaining from some. But the person that came to me at the pool is not, it was actually a non-resident that felt it was unsafe. Um, again, different issue. But it was parked in the street because he had so much in the driveway. Right. I don't know. Personally, I think it's okay. I don't, I don't think we should micromanage what people do in their own yeah, I'm, I'm, no. yeah, I'm struggling with it because, because property sizes are different. You know, yeah. I mean, the... Uh, what the Meeks? Yeah. That they, they could not live anywhere else in the village and have that. No. That motorhome. And again, it's a gorgeous motorhome. And right, and yet, you know, I see it from my backyard every day. Right. And it's fine. Um, frankly, they could have three more of them back there, and ninety-nine percent of the neighbors would know because their property is huge. If, if anybody on your side wanted to park a dozen of them behind their houses, I mean, they'd flood, but... <laughs> <laughs> float away. The boat. So we both need boats. So they just need boats. Back. Right, yeah. So you can park all the boats, and then you could go fishing every time it rains. I know. I, oh, no, it's not just when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> it's always... It, yeah, it I'm, I'm, currently can't mow my grass. I'm, I'm just struggling with equal application. As well. Nope, uh, that's why we brought it. So it's I, one I of those if, things. You know, if... if I think that changes to street parking might be something that safety could, could consider. Yeah. But I don't. That's my, my personal thought. I, I agree with that. I, I don't think we should change it. Just Lisa, do you have thoughts? <laughs> I think it looks bad. That's my thought. No should other. We do something. I don't know. Well, I'm just. I'm trying okay. to understand like no, where it is in relation to the house. Which is yeah, twelve point two point oh three is uh point oh eight specifically under B is what we're, we're I guess talking. This property line like really far from yeah. mm -hmm. the only thing I may I, I may add is, is that really the back to back is better the way he's got it now than side by side, right? Because I I don't think the intent when this was originally changed was to have even if you could be 20 feet away from the house, which is what it allows, is to have a boat and a thing, you know, or whatever else it may a trailer, right? I don't think it was meant to. So we, we, the idea was to try to cut down that view shed as you went along the street, because it does look, it to look kind of crappy from an aesthetic standpoint, right? I mean, here he's got it back to back, and I think my personal thought is at least that clarifies that particular 
rule. Because right now that's gray to me. Because what we say here is that we allow it to be, we don't say how many, but we say all structures shall be as close to structure as practical, not closer than two feet, nor further, farther than 20 feet. Now within 20 feet, you can definitively get two, you know, two tra a trailer, a boat, right. an RV. And I don't, and I know when we discussed this on the change back in 19, I know that there was a lot of discussion, Lisa, you were present for a lot of that discussion. I know a lot of this was how does it look from the street? We pushed it back 10 feet from the front of the dwelling because we were trying not to get a row of it look, right? So I think, but that wasn't considered, you know, that someone could actually put more than one, <laughs> right? you know, next to each other within that thing. So I could say, if anything needed to be corrected here, if you're okay with the back-to-back, -back, I would say, if nothing else, it should be, say, shouldn't be side-by-side, -side, right? Because if that would... If, if we're strictly talking about a side card. Yes. Shouldn't have more than one, you know, Next to each other, boom, and then boom. You have a giant shop side yard. Yeah, but that's that's what he has a decent sized side yard there. So, and then all bets but, are off in a backyard. Yeah, but it's right. So, but he's but but the aesthetics are are important. They are a quality of the neighborhood, right? And so it's one of those items that, from an intent standpoint, was discussed at the the last time was trying to minimize the aesthetic view of multiple vehicles facing the street. It is not clear here. So that's all I will say from. Could be clarified. It might be worse side by side. I feel like it's kind of moved to say, I just feel like it's a lot of vehicles. Mm -hmm. So when you say things like this or things like this, is it, is it really that different? I think it is. I think there's a definite difference in seeing this versus mm -hmm. this right here. You're at least hiding one here, you're putting it right next to each other. Right, that's my well, and, and, well, here, right. You're minimizing, you know, until, until there's a until there's a corner lot situation where the aesthetic changes, and now we've tied ourselves into code. Never. But you're also not looking straight on the property. You're driving by. You're looking from this angle, so you can see. Still to, minimized. It's not like you're really hiding the vehicle. It's still a minimized I mean, angle. It, it is. It is an actual minimized view shit. So I mean, that's that's why we that's why we write it that way. But again, if people don't care. You don't care. I'm just saying. For my suggestion, from staff suggestion, that was the discussion of the intent of the last time this came through. Uh, but if people think that's wonderful, keep it. Well, and the other thing is, is pay attention over the next, yeah. till October. Um, and again, these are probably all, could potentially all disappear here in the next month, now that summer's coming to an end. So this may not be a topic again until next year, but pay attention as you go through here and see if there's something that you guys are thinking, okay, wait, maybe there is something we need to do. Because this is, the issue that I have is, are we really changing code for one person? And the answer would be, at this point in time, yes. Right. I think that, well, I don't know. Um, over on Lakewood, there was a house. I don't know how long it was there. I walked by, and there was a car, a recreational, no, a recreational vehicle, two cars, and a truck parked diagonally in the front. And, I mean, it was a big, huge RV in the in front of the house in the driveway. Right. So I guess that, according to this, is that RV allowed to be parked in the front of their house in the driveway? 72 hours. For, for, they're living for 72 out. hours. Yeah, for them to load and unload. Yes. So that's very common in municipal code. Okay. So then that would be one that, seeing that, then would have to watch and see if they mm -hmm. There for 72 hours. And just so you know, that is something that um, our code enforcement officer has been enforcing this this year. So, so because then, we don't want to appear as if we're picking on one particular. So what's now? I'm just curious. A, a, a side yard goes past a garage. Can't. What What is the difference between a driveway and a side yard? Well, the driveway may lead up to. Is there anything that leads up to? The garage, you know, it's anything they put down that the vehicle can go on. So a driveway can go to a garage that may be in the front, you know, off the front building line, right. maybe outside of the house. But if the garage is on the side and the rear in some form, the driveway may extend to the back. Right. Right. And in that particular case, you can you can park a vehicle if you can fit it. You can park a trailer or vehicle to the rear yard, as stated in our code, or ten. It's got to be ten foot from the front of the dwelling, right, right. back. So it's got to be set back. Right, and that's I'm, like, I'm thinking about the Meeks and trying to figure out, is that RV parked on their driveway? 
It can be parked on the driveway to the side, right? So you have to get behind, 10 feet behind, to put it there more okay. than 72 hours, you gotta get it back 10, 10 feet behind. behind the front of the building line of the house. Okay, gotcha. And that could be in the side yard or the rear at that point. So I could park, I could park in my driveway an RV and a few boat trailers, and it would all be behind the house. Yeah. And that would be according to this code line. Yeah. Actually, so, I could do an RV, a boat trailer, and still be 10 feet behind the house. There you go, and that's the way. And I think that's what we're trying to determine. And three other vehicles back there, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I mean, and so this guy could. It's just like a huge park. Yeah, but, 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 that, but that's right. But it's allowed. It's allowed in the code because it, it, the intent was we were trying to give people the ability to, to be live. flexible and yeah. have their right. boat yeah. or their RV. When we get into a parking lot, now it may be pushing bounds of what aesthetically is okay in the village. But then it may get, maybe not, right? But if, if this guy put a one car parking garage, if he put a one car garage on the back part of his property, he could park something in there. Then whatever we were to change right now would, no. would be done. He could stick it in there. He, he wouldn't have to park anything in there. It would be on his driveway, but behind his property line. Yeah. And now it's not a side yard, it's a driveway. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's still, he's still a side yard with a driveway. Right, doesn't matter. Because once you're once you're beyond the front dwelling the building line of the house, you're you know, you're you're either into the side yard by the structure. So let's say, as an example, let's just say this is the structure, this is the front building line facing you. These are the side yards, right? Now, his garage may be back here. It's still in the side yard where he's parked. Okay. If the garage is here, he's come around to the rear of the structure, which is still allowed by the code. In either case, as long as he even if this is the driveway here. He could still park it 10 foot back and be legal to the code, driveway or no driveway, as long as it's some type of improved surface, right. you know, it, which is, I think, believe allowed here somewhere in that regard. I think they didn't want it up on blocks or something like that. Right. So. But the number of vehicles in your driveway, so there's another house I walk by, and I'm always amazed, like, <laughs> how do they get six vehicles in that It's impressive. I see. And it's, yeah. and it's an L-shaped house, so it's like the... House is here, and this is the garage, and then there's driveway in front, and they have cars parked here and cars parked here, and it's just well, it's not like in the yard. all the time. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, they do a good job. That's a lot of maneuvering. It's cars, and it's not recreational. It's that's all good. cars. Well, that's well, the, the hard part, part when people have to it. Yeah, I mean, if you're if it's a like family five. of five, you've got five, you know, with three kid, three teenagers yeah. with. I mean, we have four. Yeah, we had four. Yeah. I mean, it, so it's not uncommon. I'm thinking that's no. why my driveway so big, so big had kids yeah. and cars and just kept putting in the right. laptop. I mean, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have that issue, but like at my mom, like at my parents, which is across over there, I mean, there were, my parents had three cars, we had two, you know, so there was, our, we had a decent sized driveway yeah. and a I'm, garage, and a back garage. I'm thinking about the Meeks again, and if, if they were to park the way that we would prefer this guy to park, then it would be more of an eyesore than if they were to park the two of them next to each other. Mm -hmm. Like if they had a boat, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you can't, you know, if, if solving one problem is going to create another one, then... And that's then the I issue. Yeah, right. I, I don't... Are you changing code to fix one problem to create another? Right, so I, I will um, ask if anybody would like to take this up and, and propose any changes to current I just think look around and think about it over the next couple weeks it's brought to your guys' attention that this is something that I mean again I don't want to create problems from this but it's something that's been brought to our attention multiple times what, what were the concerns it looks like trash yeah. I mean I'm okay. just gonna well, say it and, that, and that's, that's pretty significant so it, it looks like trash but I mean again if you're if you're trying to so if he brings home four cars Tomorrow he gets rid of those and brings home four cars that are less than appealing Stellar. and they all have current tags, he's allowed. So you could basically be getting rid of one thing to bring in something else. So again, what are you trying to accomplish? Some people don't live the way that others do and prefer them to and um, as long as they're following code, where do we where where do we step in and where do we let people live? And I, I don't have an answer. I mean I'm I'm saying just because we don't like what one person's doing, you could potentially be affecting other people in the village that have really nice, uh, and I'm, I think actually the boat and everything's pretty nice over there. I mean, I, I think it's just, 
he has he also has a car he has a van he has you know there's other ones there's times in which he's he's parking in our parking lot because he can't park in his yeah just gonna say it but different discussion yeah yeah Um, yeah, i I think yeah if there if there are if there's a safety issue and there's a way to address different story then there's a a committee to to handle that Um, so let's let's do that let's take this month to pay attention and then another agenda item will be a simple Any changes. A, a simple request. Does anybody have changes they want to make? That's good. Fair to me. Cool. Any further comments on trailer code? Nope. Any old business? Nope. Any new business? Nope. Listen to me, I'm like, nope. Uh, look at that. Through the whole agenda with uh, action items for everything. All right, with that, I'll move to adjourn. Meeting, is it definitely next? Oh, yeah, we've done the next meeting. So we want to make it from the 1st of October. Let's, yeah, let's take the rest of the month off as long as we all agree to. Um, this is a weird month, right? So, why is it. I don't know. So, you said that and I thought, I'm not sure what you So there about. are five, today's the first, so there are five Wednesdays, which makes things weird in the first place, okay. but then when that happens, it offsets us with council meetings, or actually lines us up with council meetings to completely overload their schedules and agendas, gotcha. so that frankly, you know, we've just put three balls in Eric's court and council has taken all of his time away, so... The thought that we're actually going to make progress on anything when, <laughs> when, when Eric's part-time schedule is swamped in the first place. So if we can do our work five minutes at a time, perfect. You know, every couple of days by email, then I think we can actually still get stuff done and not ruin anybody's life. So the sixth, October yeah. sixth. Yes. And I'm going to make sure. Yeah, we don't we don't have anything scheduled other than that. So for official business. We're going to hopefully get the shelter estimate uh, and that paperwork, so we're all going to review that when it comes in. Okay. Um, we Amphitheater. Are, what's that? Amphitheater by next uh, by next meeting. Yeah, we should have some some more uh, quotes and stuff on the amphitheater that we can all. I mean, that'll be on the agenda for the next meeting for sure. Uh, signage code. Eric's, Eric's going to send out. Uh, you know what what he has compiled over based on our conversation about what we think the new language should be. And then let's have a dialogue if, if needed about that so that at the beginning of the next meeting, we can hopefully make that recommendation. And then we're all gonna just pay attention to trailers and RVs and whatnot and whatnot in driveways and see if, if we can come up with a way that, that one size does fit all. Cool, cool. So not, not, a, ton of, not a ton of homework. Okay. All right, move to adjourn, he says. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. This was good.